CNN's Rosa Flores will take a look at the unprecedented methods Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott is using to deter migrants from crossing into the state. As thousands of migrants wait in a makeshift camp under the Del Rio International Bridge to get processed by U.S. immigration authorities, a miles-long steel barrier of Texas state trooper vehicles has gone up. To deter the up to 30,000 Haitians CNN has been told could be heading towards the border. If you are targeting Texas to come to, we're going to show up in force and shut down the border. Tonight, the camp beginning to dwindle in size. The fate of the migrants still there, uncertain. Some are returned to their home countries. Others, like Rolf Luis from Haiti, are allowed to stay. So he feels well that he is able to stay. Bendecido, blessed. One by one, migrants under the bridge, many of whom officials say are Haitian, are loaded onto buses and transported to U.S. immigration processing facilities. We do enforce our immigration laws. Those are not only the laws of humanitarian relief, but the laws of accountability for those who seek to enter illegally and do not have a claim for relief under law. Some are expelled to Haiti and other countries under a pandemic health rule. And nearly a thousand have been dropped off by Border Patrol at this nonprofit refuge pending their immigration cases in the past three days, according to the group's director. This is a tremendous amount like nothing we've ever seen. That's where we met Luis, a Haitian who says he and his wife waited under the bridge for about a week. What did immigration tell you? He says that immigration told him that if he didn't appear in court that he could get deported. His destination is New York. Did anybody tell you why some Haitians can stay and some Haitians have to be deported back to Haiti? Porque a mí yo tengo un buena address. He says that his understanding is that because he had an address, a family member that he could contact in the United States, that he was allowed to stay. CNN has not been able to confirm Luis's experience applies to everyone. The next stop for many of these migrants, a nearby gas station, where vans and buses take them to cities across the nation. He's going to Miami. That's where we met Peter Simmerin, who is from Haiti, too. Peter, thank you. As he says he's afraid of being deported to Haiti, he has to run. His van has arrived. It's what life has been like for these migrants recently, a hurry up and wait into an uncertain future. The Biden administration upping the number of deportation flights to seven a day. Now, that could include very soon not just Haiti, but also Chile and Brazil. These are some of the transition countries where Haitians have been living for the past few years. Now, not all of the migrants are being deported. We have seen, and you saw in that piece, that some of the migrants are being released into communities. We know from the local nonprofit organization that in the past three days, nearly 1,000 migrants have been released. And Jake, that doesn't include the thousands of migrants who are being transported to other cities in Texas for processing by U.S. immigration authorities. All Jake? right, Rosa Flores for us, doing great work in Del Rio, Texas for us. Thank you so much. Let's talk about this with Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas. She serves on the House Homeland Security Committee. Congresswoman, thanks so much for joining us. So thanks. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called the deportations of Haitian migrants a continuation of, quote, hateful and xenophobic Trump policies, unquote. Schumer's talking about Title 42, that's a Trump-era policy allowing for immediate deportation for some migrants due to the COVID pandemic. You've also called for the Biden administration to end that policy. Did you get any assurances today when you met with Biden administration officials uh, that they're going to take action on uh, stopping that policy? Well, Jake, thank you, first of all, for having me. Why don't we start from uh, point A, and that is let us change the narrative. The narrative is that we have a human rights crisis at the border. Uh, I am a Texan. We have about 2,000 miles, a little under 2,000 miles of border. Uh, and most of that border is well protected with legal points of entry and it operates appropriately. But what has happened is because of the Trump relic of Title 42 and the demonizing of immigrants through our governor, Governor Abbott, who's looking toward the next election, we can't seem to really uh, know how to handle this surge. I think the Biden administration is very eager 
uh, to adhere to that we are a land of immigrants and a land of laws. And that is what Secretary Mayorkas was saying, that he has the ability to provide uh, security of the border, but also I think our meeting uh, with a number of officials in the White House got them to understand that one, Title 42 is discretionary. Even DHS said that the medical uh, expertise that was used there may not have been uh, that accurate. And again, it is a relic of the Trump administration. Here's what we uh, want to see. Mm -hmm. A moratorium and or suspension of Title 42 uh, to be able to use the resources that have been sent to the border, meaning personnel, to determine and do as migrants did in uh, other surges in 2014, surges in the spring of 2021, uh, to be given the determination of who could get an asylum uh, appointment, who could get a, a in court because they were families. We know some will have to be uh, removed at some point, but when you have a narrative of the largest deportation in months or years, that does not fit uh, favorably. That is not the administration. I know their heart is different. We saw that. We feel that we're going to see some changes, and mm -hmm. we're going to also understand, uh, Jake, that as the Homeland Security has said, the migrants are not national security threats. So the president of the NAACP was in that meeting with you today, and, and today, yesterday he came out with a scathing statement, quote, President Biden is claiming on the world stage that America is back, but back for who? The humanitarian crisis happening under this administration on the southern border disgustingly mirrors some of the darkest moments in America's history. Darkest moments in America's history. Do you agree with that? Well, civil rights leaders are respected. They are our partners. This was a meeting of the members of the Congressional Black Caucus. I'm an officer of that uh, organization. Our chairwoman is Chairwoman Beatty. These were chairs and leaders of the uh, Democratic Caucus as well. Here's where we are. One, we take no backseat to the dastardly actions that we saw, the intolerant reminiscence of slavery, uh, the pain of looking at that action, and maybe even feeling the pain in your own soul. So we're not really stepping away from that. We know, however, uh, that there are actions at the border that don't, in, don't reflect that, that the border is large. But I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. We made it very clear that the investigation must be held thoroughly and quick, and individuals must be accountable. We already know that those involved will not be anywhere near that area at all. The horse detail has been an institution, but I've never in my 27 years of the United States Congress ever seen that, and I've been to the border many, many times. We're so, on the road to changing this, and that reference to color, to being black, and our history of slavery, we cannot have that as a narrative of immigration. It must be erased. We're dealing with Afghan allies. We're dealing with right. uh, migrants from North uh, Central, um, uh, from uh, the Northern Triangle, and yeah. now Haitians. We must do it right. So, Congresswoman, as you know, a lot of the Haitians uh, that are crossing the border uh, have, they're not, they didn't just immediately flee Haiti uh, this year because of the earthquake or the political violence. Um, they've been in, in Central and South America for years, many of them. Chile, Brazil, Panama, Colombia, some for more than a decade after the 2010 earthquake. They're coming now to the U.S. because of the deteriorating economy in many of those countries. Um, does that change, do you think, the urgency with which the U.S. should admit these individuals, these migrants, into the United States, given that they're not fleeing an immediate uh, occurrence? Uh, Jake, I'm so glad you asked that question, that you posed that question, uh, because that's my legal interpretation. First of all, you're right. They've been in uh, South and Central America for at least a decade after the 2010 earthquake. Um, and many of them did not become citizens of the countries that they're in. Uh, and there was an economic con uh, collapse. Some of them do represent that they have been uh, pushed out. I don't want to uh, give that, uh, that I've documented it, that they're uh, not having any place to stay. Uh, and of course, we know that Haiti is a collapsed society at this time, it's assassination, earthquake, violence. And so they're stateless. This is a uh, humanitarian crisis that the world knows about. When people become stateless, uh, they are refugees of such that they have to find a place uh, that can welcome them. And so I think this is uh, an opportunity for the Biden administration to distinguish itself, uh, to deal with the U.S. Department of State, uh, and to be able to craft a response to individuals that have not been determined to be a national security threat at all and, and can be uh, moved forward under that premise, but given mm -hmm. uh, access to asylum and other uh, immigration processes, you know, families and children, unaccompanied children are being treated differently, 
and really yeah. ease the time at the border. We have a pathway forward. We've done it when we had the migrants from uh, the Northern Triangle. We've done it in 2014 when I was down at the border. I've been at the border at every crisis, mm -hmm. and I will be there here as well. We believe in human rights and civil rights. That's what Haitians deserve. Jake, we can get it done. The Biden administration has been really acting very strongly in the aftermath of the earthquake. We mm -hmm. believe we're going to be responded to by this meeting. We're ready to roll up our sleeves. We're going to get a new so, protocol for the Haitian migrants.